I think this is rather bizarre, isn't it, that, that we have uh, all these constituent parts of the UK where people are incredibly proud of their identity, either as British or, or as Welsh or, or Northern Irish or as, uh, as Scottish. And yet this one, the largest constituent part of the UK, it's almost embarrassing for a lot of people to say, I'm English. It's a phrase they just wouldn't use. I'm not, they wouldn't say, I'm proud to be English. Why do you think that is? Well, I'm not interested in who they asked. I mean, to be English, you have to be born in England to be English. You can be British born abroad. You can become, you can become a British person. So one st- first off, one wonders who they asked. Uh, and if they just took random selections in London, they probably only got about uh, one English person out of two. Uh, so I think that's going to... Sp- well, no, I think it's a, I think it's a nationwide poll. I mean, uh, I mean, I, and I, and look, allowing for the fact that yes, people do move around a lot, an awful lot of us, like myself, I consider myself British, English, um, but I'm, I'm actually of half Irish stock, but I don't consider myself Irish uh, really, um, uh, because because I've never lived in Ireland. But but do you think it's just that a lot of people simply don't feel that cultural affinity to the country then? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, th- this survey, they looked at Boston, they look at rural communities, and people proud to be English go very, very much mm. higher in rural communities where they were probably born and their parents were born, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, looking a little bit deeper at it, why aren't uh, more people proud to be English? And I think that's uh, a reflection um, of the education system. Uh, I think people perhaps these days don't get the benefit of a traditional education. And if you ask those same people what the principles of English law were uh, and, 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 and what sci- great English scientists had produced, so on and so forth, you'd probably find that they wouldn't know that either. Uh, so consequently, they can't have much to be proud of if they don't know anything about England. Well, and I think that's where your problem that, lies. That is a good point, actually. It's, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. I went to school in America for a couple of years, and, I, and again, we used to salute the flag, we sang the national anthem every morning, but I, I very much felt that people were being raised, and this is, this is the middle of nowhere in the Midwest, and it was it was very much about being proud of being proud of America and being proud to be an American, and and uh, something I really noticed in, in certainly in my schooling, at my you know bog standard comp, and and and, and seen it in, in friends' children since then that that actually yeah, people aren't being raised to be proud of Britain or Britain's history. We're constantly told that we this awful country, racist, nasty, invading countries, empire, and doing terrible things. Whereas actually we've got an awful lot to be proud of, not just our culture and our heritage, but also our history. Well, you're absolutely right, Julia, of course. But, of course, if you took a cross-section of state school teachers and asked them if they were proud to be English, you'd probably find almost none. Uh, and, of course, these are the people that are bringing up... Uh, these are the teachers bringing up our young people. Uh, and it's my experience with state, mainly with state schools, that they can't wait to denigrate the English. And if you've been brought up on denigration at school, plus the fact that you haven't uh, been taught about the great things that England has done and where it's led the world in the field of law and the field of science and the field of culture and literature, uh, you're going to come out with uh, you're going to come out with a sort of um, uh, result in a referendum that has just been taken. Uh, but I think I think it's not a question of people really not being proud of being English. I think we have a huge question mark now over our education system. And I, you probably know this with your background and, and your research background and your team. But 200,000 children last year left school with no educational qualification yeah. at all. 200,000. So the consequence is we are asking children uh, what what they believe or what they think. We're asking children with basically without the benefit of a traditional education at all. Ryan is in the new forest. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000. And yeah, Ryan, you wanted to have a say about our conversation we had about this poll suggesting that uh, majority of young people don't feel proud to be English. Why do you think that is? Um, well, uh, I feel it's, it's been long coming anyway. I mean, uh, I'm 37. Um, I've... Um, oh, hello, by the way. Hello, and, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, it's rude. Um, yeah, and, and basically, I, uh, you know, uh, I've as, as a youngster myself, there was like a, a growing thing to do with around, I don't know, Euro 96, I was 15 years old. There was a lot oh, of happy days. Thing, everything like that. Oh, tell me about it, happy days. Yeah, it's great. I was 15 years old in the pub, and then as soon as the penalty got missed, a punk glass got thrown over my head, and my uncle told me to get out. It was great. But it was like I say, it's that sort of mentality is a thing, I think, that sort of drove a lot of a wedge in Englishmen, because Englishmen, Englishmen, there is, um, you know, uh, it's like a class system thing doesn't help. 
you know, because you've obviously got two different types. You've got, like I would say, the working class Englishman, those class as like the dog, blah, blah, blah. and then you've got, you know, the, the quaint Englishman. Um, it's all different. And, and I feel to try and build a nationalism between, it's not obviously two extremes there, but, you know, I think it's very difficult. I also feel that the government doesn't mind not having... Uh, a wedge uh, that sort of that doesn't mind having the wedge there between the parties because obviously if you did have this great nationalism feeling, you could get movements and things passed through a lot a bit more difficult rather than splitting people's opinions yeah. between classes and but, parties. But it, um, you know, and, but it is interesting and, though, isn't it, that, that this is peculiar to the to English people because Scots and Welsh very you know talk openly and and it's and it's not denigrated openly talking about being proud to be Scottish, proud to be Welsh, English. Say you're proud to be English, people go, oh, racist. What's wrong with you? Well, the thing is, I think as well, if you look, if people that do look into history, I know saying about saying about history before. I mean, maybe if you take things like the inventions or certain movements in laws, obviously, and things that we push through would be, you know, uh, you could say you could be proud of. But obviously, if you haven't got the unity there, not all of you are going to be proud of those certain things anyway altogether. Mm. And also, a lot of the history, especially when it comes to the, even the home nations, you know, there's. Uh, if, if you look through history, oh, let's go and look at our relationship with Ireland. Great, you know, let's look at our relationship five, six hundred years ago with Scotland. You know, it's patchy, and it was people. It was very tribal and still. It's like, you know, so obviously that they uh, because we were the biggest, I suppose, mover of Britain as a whole. We, we take we're, we're the it. ones who take responsibility for everything. Oh, Ryan, fascinating. Thank you so much, Ryan. 